Hey y'all, diving back into some hard space ship breaker. I got some positive feedback on my guide video for the robust tug. And I started seeing some comments, questions, and concerns about ship decompression, how to handle that. I decided to make another one of these videos about ship decompression from my point of view. My point of view being a very I'm not good at games point of view and that's me I'm not good at games um, I would say I'm a bit above average at some games uh, this game I would say I'm a bit above average at but I don't get into like the nitty gritties of like the mechanics of the game I I don't know how everything works I don't know how to metagame this I don't do data mining I don't follow the game that closely I have been playing this game for a long time though, and I've found methods that work for me. And these methods are safe and efficient. And that's what matters in this game, right? You can take as much time as you really need to in this game, the money doesn't matter, as I've said before, as long as you're being safe, especially if you're trying to do a one life run. As you saw there, I'm certification level 20. I'm going to try looking for a station hopper, a gecko station hopper that's around hazard level 9. That's not one. Here we go. Uh, hazard level 8. Okay, that's what we're going to get. A hazard level 8. That's fine. It'll work. <coughs> now, ship decompression is one of the more complicated parts of the game, but just like anything else, it can be done safely as long as you take just a little bit of time to prepare for it. I have seen some above average people, some people who really understand this game, who they will use like the explosive charges, they'll have controlled violent decompressions. I can't do all that, right? As I've said, I'm, I'm not getting that into this game. So what you're gonna see is, you know, a thousand foot view of how to do this. I, I picked the, um, the Starliners, the uh, Gecko Transports, because they tend to be large, high hazard, and fairly complicated with decompression. And as we know, the, the hard part about decompression really is you don't know the arrangement of these atmosphere regulators you don't know the arrangement of the rooms you don't know you know generally at this hazard level every room is pressurized but you won't know that for sure either <clears throat> oh yeah gotta remember to start with these always gotta remember to start with these guys i'm not gonna go through a full shift breakdown since we're just tackling decompression right now and it takes me about three shifts, three full shifts to break down a gecko. So I'm not gonna go through all of that. I, I just always wanna kinda do that part. Let's close this door. Closing doors is an important part of decompression. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to identify where, that's an airlock, where I have working atmosphere regulators and what rooms they governor. Which this is pretty straightforward. This won't have one. It doesn't have a door. So we got... Ooh, I like that. I like this so far. I like what we're working with. We got these three atmosphere regulators functioning. We have two broken ones here. The These geckos never have one in the crawl space. Uh, in fact, I think the Stargazer is the only one that has its own dedicated crawl space one. And then, of course, the uh, heavy transport as the one for the cargo bay. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna close these doors. And the reason I'm closing the doors, this one doesn't close, because that's for this whole compartment, is because I want to sort of vent as little atmosphere at a time as possible. That's how you really control these decompressions, is by going from smallest to biggest. So 
So I've chosen this room to decompress first. Pretty safe bet to pick this room right here. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna open this door and this is gonna violently decompress and it's gonna rip stuff off of the walls, but these computers will tank it just fine. I looked around in there, there wasn't anything major. It's gonna, see the computers are gonna take these. The atmosphere regulator is gonna go flying off. Functioning or not, all the atmosphere regulators will come flying in. And you might lose those, you might get those pinballing around. But if there's enough space, if there's enough corners like that, then they'll lose their energy pretty quickly and you don't have to worry too much about them. If you want to be extra safe, you can take those atmosphere regulators off the wall and you can stick them in an airlock. And you don't have to worry about them smashing themselves against a wall or... What the? Why is the airlock? That was weird. The, uh, the airlock, like, didn't do its automatic deal for a moment there. Now this room next, and this is it. This is all there is to depressurization. It's just looking at your rooms, making sure that you've mitigated as much risk as possible, not sure why this door opened. Like I said, I don't fully understand the mechanics, and I'm not sure why this door opened and depressurized the crawl space for me as well. That's, that's a strange one. But again, it's just, Taking a moment to look around, seeing what you're working with, looking for risks, mitigating risks. If you need to, you can throw things that are heavy and are going to damage components of the ship or break um, these aluminum panels and toss them in this airlock. Then they shouldn't get affected by the depressurization. Something weird happened with this airlock. Pretty sure that was a bug where the airlock for some reason didn't close automatically like it's supposed to. So maybe maybe close those airlocks yourself. But again, you can toss anything that you think will be too much of a hazard in here. If you've got like a bunch of coolant tanks and also an atmosphere regulator stuck on a wall, pull that atmosphere regulator off, throw it in there. Maybe pull the coolant tanks out, throw them in there. I won't pull them out of the airlock. I'll just pull them back into this room and work the ship like normal because it's kind of a pain in the ass sometimes to get things through this little space and up and out. It's just kind of a waste of time, you know? Anyways, I have safely depressurized this entire ship, and it works out for me that these pieces all came into here because the way I break apart these station hoppers, I like to cut a hole into this floor anyways so I can send all of this out through the floor. And so it worked to my advantage that depressurizing this space ripped these cabinets out for me. Now I don't have to do it myself. So I'm going to pause the video here for a moment because the one that I always see that people have trouble with is the salvage runner. And I know the salvage runner pre full release was a very buggy ship. I saw in the release notes for the full version that they've fixed those bugs, they've addressed the issues with the salvage runner, and I've taken apart a few salvage runners now, and I haven't seen any of the bugs that used to happen. Sometimes you would spawn in and the salvage runners would immediately tear themselves apart. It was super crazy. So again, I haven't been seeing that, but I am still seeing people having issues with the salvage runner, which I, I don't fully understand. I don't, I don't mean to sound condescending if you think that's what it is but the salvage runner is probably the easiest ship to decompress like in the game like i have more trouble with mackerels than i do with salvage runners so again we're going to pause this video i'm going to hop into a salvage runner all right we're back and i uh managed to nab myself a uh, a hazard nine salvage runner so let's give her a little look see yeah Perfect. Everything is pressurized. Again, I'm not going to go through this as like a full pull apart. I'm just going to tackle the decompression part and the disconnecting the engine still. Because, you know, good habits are good practice. Hello. This is strange. Why is this in here? Okay, so like I said, I really think that the salvage runners are the easiest to decompress because of this right here. You can decompress the crawl space 
and this entire section of the ship with a single atmosphere regulator. If this atmosphere regulator is missing, it makes things a little bit more complicated, but not that bad because you also still have this airlock. And we are going to utilize this airlock. Just as easy as this, right? You can press the ship. I don't know why this door closes. It just leads into the crawl space, which you already, it's open through the roof. So, all right, there we go. Go through one side, now it's gonna pressurize because this side still has pressure. Ooh, okay, that's the crawl space. <laughs> I was like, why is there stuff already pressurized? And again, just like with the station hopper, I'm gonna look around at what I got in these rooms and decide which room I'm going to allow to violently depressurize. I'm not going to start in this room because I don't want anything flying in here and smacking one of these thruster fuel tanks. I find that these have become very fragile. Mm, I might do this room for a couple reasons. One is there's not really anything that'll get broken if something heavy comes flying in here. And also I can cut away this wall panel. So the stuff that comes flying in here, once I get the nanocarbon shell pulled off and I can burn through this panel and pull this away, then I can heave it all out here into the barge. It'll really help me in that way. Again, I almost never start with the cockpit because what will break loose are these storage bins and your atmosphere regular, which that one's broken anyways. And they're gonna lose all of their energy and they're not gonna do any damage at all to these computer terminals right here. So I'm not worried about that. I'm not gonna do this one because it's broken. And that's really the only reason I'm not gonna do that one. This one would actually be a pretty good candidate too because I am gonna have to cut through, like I can burn through that because I wanna take that ECU eventually anyways and I wanna burn through one of these walls to get through it. So that would be a good candidate if it was functioning. Same thing as before. Okay. Ooh, I'm gonna leave this one open actually. And in fact, no, I'm gonna close this one though. I'm gonna leave this one open. Because like I said, I'm going to try to channel all of that stuff into this room. And this will cause a more violent decompression by leaving more compressed compartments open but I think it'll handle it just fine. Airlock was slow to close, should have closed the airlock myself. And there we go. It didn't quite work out like I expected it to. I would have thought these bins would have come all the way into the room like the atmosphere regulators did, but it's fine. It's fine. This ship is now completely depressurized. Oh. The ECU room. I forgot about that. I was saving that one because I want to lessen the impact of the of the decompression by just this little bit. Every little bit, you know. Risk mitigation. That's the name of the game. It's risk mitigation. Now I would normally go through the rest of the ship and pull it apart as normal from here. I would probably. Um, start by cutting myself an exit through the nanocarbon so I don't have to keep coming in and out the airlock. I might cut away the airlock itself to make that exit. I'll usually start with the engines though. Um, no, that's right. I didn't purge the engines like I said I would. Oh well, not the point of this video. But I would usually start with the engine compartment and cut exits through there because I want to get those these nanocarbon pieces over the engines moving as soon as possible because it'll take me a couple of uh, rounds of tethering them to get them to do with the processor with the method that I use. One other thing I want to go over, um, and I'll just do it here in the salvage runner, I won't boot up another new ship, is when you're dealing with AI nodes. So AI nodes are like kind of the end game. If you get a hazard level 9 ship with AI nodes, that's, that's it. That's, that is the most difficult challenge you will face. And AI nodes, in, in case any of you are unaware, is they basically activate anything that has 
the ability to activate. They'll open and close doors. They will mess with atmosphere regulators. They'll cycle atmosphere regulators. I don't, I don't know if they'll actually mess with the control switches on the engines. I've never, I've never tested that. Maybe I ought to someday. See the full extent of what they'll toggle. So actually, so I, I kind of overblew it. In my experience, they mess with doors and atmosphere regulators, but that can be extremely dangerous, especially like on a ship like this. Because they can force a violent decompression. If you're in the middle of decompressing a ship and they open a door on you that you didn't want opened, they'll, they'll break something. They can also repressurize a room. They'll close these doors and then push this button and repressurize this ship. And if you're caught unawares, you might cut into a pressurized room and cause an explosive decompression. Or even if you realize what's happened, you're now having to re-go through the process of trying to safely depressurize that ship and you might get trapped somewhere where you'll be forced to make that hard decision of what you're willing to sacrifice in order to get yourself out. So how to deal with AI nodes? First, don't touch them. Leave them. Leave them until you're ready to go, because they won't start messing with stuff until you start burning them away. You'll usually find a ton in the cockpit on computers and stuff. You'll almost guaranteed to find them on any fuel tanks. Uh, the engines will usually have them on there, and the reactor itself will usually have them on there. You know, anything where it would be, you know, pretty sweaty to try and burn them off of there like you're coming at them at like this angle and trying to burn across this without blowing it up right that's where you'll find those things and just don't mess with them if you have to pull something out that has a, a, an AI node attached to it then you can send it to the barge and it will sit pretty in the barge and wait for you to be ready Now, once you have identified where those AI nodes are, again, you're not going to burn them off yet. What you're going to do is depressurize the ship like normal. And what you need to do then is you need to cut every compartment in a vent out to space. That will prevent the AI nodes from being able to repressurize a room. You cannot repressurize a room if it has a path out to space. If you check your scanner, these rooms will be a white box with a red line through them. That means that that room is permanently depressurized. It will never be repressurized again. So once you do that, then you're free to burn those AI nodes and there's little to nothing they can really do. They'll open and close doors still, which might be a little bit annoying, but they won't do anything dangerous because you've taken away their only dangerous tool, which is their ability to repressurize the ship. Now, let me think. Is there anything else I want to go over with decompression? Not really. That's about it. So, you know, again, thousand foot overview. Look at what you've got. Look at the hazards. Mitigate those hazards by tossing stuff into an airlock or picking the room with the hazards in it to be the room that you're going to decompress using the button. And then just work your way from smallest to biggest. Depressurize those little rooms first and then go towards those big rooms. And that's all I've got for y'all. Thanks for watching. See you next time.